Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Meg Healy. And I'm Kate Seinard. Today on the podcast, we're talking capsule wardrobes. We'll discuss what they are and how to create them. Then we'll dive into a Q&A with Amanda, who couldn't chime in on our listener questions episode, and we'll see if our answers have changed at all. We'll share our current sojo and ask you to share something too. But before we get started, how was everybody's weekend? Amanda and I had a long one. Meg had to work yesterday. How'd it go for everyone? It was good. It was good. We, I don't know. It was a nice little blend of weekend things. We did some yard work. We did mm-hmm. some cleaning and rearranging because I am just sick of every room in my house at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and I finally did a little bit of sewing. It's been really, um, I don't know. It's It's been a couple of weeks actually since um, I've really had the motivation to be in my sewing room. So um, I finally did a little bit and it felt really good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about you, Meg? What's your what's your weekend count? Well, actually, this was the first weekend I didn't do any sewing. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) I was on um, the cleaning train, like Amanda. I totally. uh, We got like a new. I got a new cutting table for my studio, and then we used that uh, table to put a new. Um, kitchen island in our kitchen. And so there's a, it's like a big open shelf. So I got a bunch of baskets and I re, like, I, I've just been re, I can't stop reorganizing. Like last night, I just went through my like underwear drawer and I just refolded and organized them by cut. Like I just couldn't stop organizing. <laughs> I feel like I get the same way with like sewing with, I just get into a task and I just like can't stop doing it. But I, every drawer in my house, even my studio, my spice, I even reordered my spices. I put them in all new jars and I labeled them. And so that was what <laughs> wow. I was doing. <laughs> That's impressive. And it feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, how about you, Kate? Well, I um I actually did manage to do some sewing this weekend. In fact, oh, nice. I I made my Zadie jumpsuit actually romper <gasps> because I ran out of you uh did? I how did. did I didn't have quite enough. Uh, I was going to do a crop pant length and I didn't have quite enough fabric, so they ended up being short. I don't know what they look like. I haven't had the guts to put them on. <laughs> I haven't put it on yet. (laughs) Um, So I'm kind of like, hmm, tomorrow's going to be pretty warm. Maybe I'll take the jump tomorrow and wear my new romper jumpsuit thing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I did. Um, Yeah. You mean jump into your jumpsuit? Jump into my jumpsuit. (laughs) (laughs) I was so excited. I keep seeing like cute little um, rompers and like jumpsuit. Yeah. With shorts. I was even seeing like, um, I really just hated these for the longest time, but like overalls with shorts. And oh. finally this morning, like I yeah. saw a pair and I was like, actually, that's kind of cute. So I saw a pair this morning too is the peppermint uh, play suit one that I saw. It's like the little, oh, yeah. it's, it's like an overall type. I guess it's kind of not quite overall, but a little bit like that style. Yeah. But, uh, Fun fact too. I'm pretty sure the only pair of overalls I've ever owned were shorts. And also, I'd like to point out, I was like a sophomore in high school. So. <laughs> You're just so ahead of your time. So yeah, ahead of, maybe way far behind. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Who's counting? Are those called shorter alls or is that just me? Uh, the, I, I think don't it's, know. Well, it's probably not just you. It's not me. Um, but <laughs> yeah, there's got to be some alls. made up word for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a, I was going, I also did, I did my big spring, um, this just reminds me, my big big spring fall like switch. So I took down, Mm. uh, you know, all of my sweaters and I, you know, brought out of the Tupperware and, you know, rehung all of my spring um, goods. And I found, I forgot that I made like a jumper type. It has the overall top, but it has like the skirt. And oh, you just reminded me that I brought that out of hiding and it has like this tropical and print and pelicans and all this stuff. So, oh, I want to wear it. It's so Super bad. cute. Well, it sounds like it was a good weekend for that. Meg was just telling us before we started recording that it's going to be really hot in Toronto this week. Oh, yeah. It's super, super, super hot. I'm like wearing, I'm actually dressed like a crayon right now. I'm wearing my green Crocs. I have green jean shorts on and then I have my green Intero shell on. So I'm full on 
Hashtag nice. <laughs> like nice. <laughs> I'm wearing an Antero shell too, but it's under my sweatshirt, so oh you can't gosh. really see it. Um, nice. I, I have. I feel like uh, I wore one the um, on Saturday. Julian and I went for a walk, and I feel like my permanent sunburn now is the Antero V. I have a sunburn <laughs> that's that perfect V line shape, and so perfect. now I can only either wear high necks or just further interos until my son like you probably can't see it in the camera but it's like a full-on v necklace that is hilarious <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> better off than me i got burned the weekend before last right before we were filming mind you and i was wearing uh my my watch and i had to sit there while i was getting my makeup ready um putting bronzer on my um wrist to try to get rid of my um to try to get rid of my terrible terrible tan line um, oh, but also, I much. only got burned below my elbows, <laughs> so oh, I've got a little bit of a, let's say, farmer's tan at the moment. Oh, I know. Back into the land of sunscreen and all that. And mm-hmm. Exactly. I was very mad at myself for not wearing sunscreen that day. Uh, it's, yeah, sometimes it just happens. Well, should we jump into, so speaking of like me and everybody wearing Antero shells that feel like right now I basically have a capsule of Antero shell pattern but <laughs> like I Yay. literally have I think I almost have 10 because um you guys get a little exclusive but I do I just um filmed a little video where I actually show how to make it like five different ways so I have like a million of them. And, oh my gosh they are so good Meg yeah they're they're so are. good I'm so happy with them. So hopefully I'll, you know, share a w- much more of that uh, special project soon. But I basically have a capsule uh, wardrobe and collection of Antero shells. <laughs> so <laughs> so capsule collections and wardrobes can be fun and convenient to make and wear. Pick a theme, pick a color palette, a style, and just sew away. A capsule should feel like a cohesive collection with pieces that can mix and match and wear with each other. So I just want to start off with kind of the difference between what I think is like a capsule wardrobe and a capsule collection. I, yeah. I know Kate is just dying to know. Yeah, I was asking her about this before we started recording. I'm like, I can't answer these questions unless you tell me the difference. And she's like, well, you'll just have to wait and find out. Yeah, I feel like a capsule wardrobe is kind of just like your basic war- – it's – um if you have like a whole capsulated wardrobe, everything in your, like all works together. I think of like, you know, a pair of jeans and a buttoned up white shirt, like kind of those like key basics where a capsule collection is kind of a mini collection within that. Let's say you, um, like a bathing suit capsule make, let's say you make like a, a cover up and a bathing suit and a pair of shorts that all work together. Like it's a little, cohesive collection within your wardrobe. So I I hmm. think because I know I don't have like a – like there's some people who just have like a capsule wardrobe where like everything just kind of works together, you know, the basics. And then collections are just kind of fun little um, – fun little groups of garments that you sew and just maybe for – a vacation or for like what I I think of what I think of Kate, what you sewed for um, your trip to Vienna was a capsule collection because that's, okay. That's not, yeah, that was kind of a, yeah, I cannot take everything out of my, yeah, I can't take everything out of my closet and wear it with those pieces because in a lot of cases they'll clash. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just I don't know if I like that's just what I think uh, uh think of it. So what is our like what's our experience with with capsules? Um have we ever sewn one? Do we have a wardrobe of it or do we sew lots of mini ones? Like what's what's our experience with it? Well, we were just talking about my Vienna uh, <laughs> capsule, so I'll yeah. just jump in with that. Um my Vienna capsule is officially the only true capsule I think I've ever sewn. Um, And it was for a specific trip to a specific place at a specific time of year. Um, My wardrobe is full of pieces that have nothing to do with each other. They're just, I like this print. I'm like this print. I like this print. And they're kind of a disaster if you uh, try to mix and match too much. But I do have a tendency to go for very neutral bottoms and then fun tops. So I can usually mix and match pretty easily, even if it's not a collection of like classic pieces. 
Um, I also, I don't know if this counts. You'll have to tell me. I uh, I made a pair of pants. They're nini culottes, actually, out of a uh, print fabric that I really love. Um, I'm sure you know it. It's the black and white one. Um, I have makes all sorts of stuff out of that particular print because I've got a bunch of it. Um, and then I discovered as soon as I made them that I had no um, solid tops at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did not see how I could, well, I probably could print mix with it now because I've had some education on that in the past couple of weeks. But um, at the time I was like, okay, I need solid tops here. So I ended up sewing um, a series of tops specifically to go with those pants and they don't have to, but they were designed to make sure that I had something to wear with those pants. So I don't know if that counts as a capsule collection or not. What do you think? I think they can totally be a capsule. I think a capsule is just anything that I just think it's just things that mix and match with each other, you know, and kind of go together. What do you Makes think, sense. Amanda? Yeah, I totally agree. I think it can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. I I did a similar thing for my London trip last fall. Ooh. Um, I made a little capsule, but I definitely I I pulled a couple pieces that I knew I wanted to take based on the what the weather was looking like and then kind of mixed in some new pieces along with that to create like a a capsule. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that, so, you know, that was kind of the most dedicated capsule that I've done, but I definitely bring in this idea in a lot of different ways. I have done like a little mini capsule with just like Mm -hmm. six pieces that were intended to Mm -hmm. mix and match two pairs of pants, two shirts, two cardigans, kind of, I think that was like, um, kind of midway through the winter one year. And it was just kind of like my midwinter capsule. Um, and then I think that I, I do it in some ways, um, around like seasonal planning. Yes. Like, yeah. Cause I, I feel like, um, that's a good time to think about the season as a whole and thinking about like how your fabrics and how the silhouettes kind of work together or, mm-hmm. Or complement each other or fill holes in your existing wardrobe. Um, mm-hmm. So I think in those ways, I really like this idea because I, I don't know, and, and I do enjoy kind of sketching it out ahead of time yeah. because I, I don't know, I feel like that keeps me from falling in love and making the same thing over and over and over yeah. again. Although I do that and it, those are great. That's great in terms of building a capsule wardrobe. Um, but for mm. building in some variety and like, and mm-hmm. really sticking to my plans. I really like to sketch things out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think mm-hmm. it's a really useful tool. I mean, I think the, the starting place for it is like, is a very practical idea of like, mm-hmm. you know, planning things out um, so that you don't overlap with things that you already have so that things um, go together really well. And, and all with the idea that you're making things that you actually wear. Um, Mm -hmm. so I really, really love that part of the capsule kind of idea. Mm -hmm. I feel like I do accidental capsules (laughs) all the time. (laughs) I realize it after I should start a hashtag be like accidental capsule. Cause my pajama, I, as I was, you know, going through every bin, I was going through like my pajama bin and I realized that my pajamas are a capsule. Everything that I've made goes with, goes with each other. (laughs) Nice. <laughs> I have sets, but then I it's like my color palette for my pajamas is like this pink, pink and green uh, and white, basically. I have so many like bottoms that are, you know, printed and floral, but then just green tops, just white tops, just pink. To, and I realize everything can mix and match with each other. So I have a total accidental capsule. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but I definitely, yeah. Um, but if anyone wants to see a really great visual of capsules and is you need to follow Emily Hallman on Instagram. I think she's at Emily Hallman designs and she makes like these gorgeous little um, curated collections. It's like five pieces she has um, on mannequins and it's just, it's so inspiring and she does such a good job and I just love it. I, I just wish I could just do more of that. Oh. It is so funny that you mention her because she is going to be in So News this fall. Yeah. And we actually have a piece from her about oh, creating mini yeah. little mini collections because she is kind of a master. 
Oh, um, she's like the for me. It's like the golden state. Like totally. she's like you know when you think of it, that's she is the one that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, mine are never that um, that organized. I'm kind of like uh, these kind of go together. I'm gonna fudge it a little yeah. bit, and <laughs> you know, usually works out. But I feel like hers are like so cohesive, and they are. They're like little mini collections. Mm. You're like a little. You know, you're like a fashion designer, exactly. making a little collection for yourself yeah. that, um, you know, is meant to be, you know, mix and match and go together. And I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when I was in fashion school, like part of uh, every semester, we kind of did like a, a collection and, you know, you get your fabric swatches and always, you know, you would be taught that within your collection, one one fabric like shouldn't just be used once it mm. should ha- be used at least like twice throughout um throughout like the the span of the collection just to mm-hmm. kind of bring everything together uh but you have accent fabrics but nothing should be totally iso- isolated and that was just kind mm. of you know with in the industry and you see you know even when you see runway shows and fa- they all go together you see repetitive totally. fabrics and a theme mm-hmm. and uh, everything like that and I think yeah exactly like my whole wardrobe is kind of one basic capsule because I just sew with basically neutrals and then the color green so everything kind of goes <laughs> together I was realizing but yeah I realized also as well as my pajamas, all my like workout wear is also kind of a capsule because I just buy and make a similar color palette for that use of garments. So I can wear lots of different options mm-hmm. and sports bras with that pant and that top. And so just everything kind of goes together. But um, I would like to more like how these accidental cap- ac- oh, that is a tongue twister. Accidental capsules happen. <laughs> Jeez. I want to actually plan out one. And mm. uh, so that's why it was so fun when, um, if you haven't checked it out, our uh, the So News Athleisure uh, Capsule Studio Collection, um, that was like fun to to help plan out and, and curate and work with all the designers. And so I want to do that for myself too. And I know, Amanda, you did the, the well-traveled one too. And I mm-hmm. love to give that as an option for people to kind of buy a pattern pack in a group of a capsule idea and you can kind of just pick a palette, you know? Yeah. I love mm-hmm. that. And, and I feel like we've got our um, capsule studio collection and there are a couple of other kind of capsule pattern collections out there. And I, I really mm-hmm. kind of hope that um, that trend continues because yeah, I, I mean, like I feel like, you know, we've talked about kind of like high-waisted pants. Well, what do you, what kind of top do you wear with high-waisted pants? It's kind of nice when, the work is yep. done for you mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you, you know, you get a pattern collection and you, you know, things are going to go together. Um, so I love that. But I was, I was just sitting here thinking about your accidental capsules, Meg. And I feel like <laughs> I have, I've actually done the same thing too, but I think mine has been pretty specific around like colors, like uh, in the yeah. fall, I, I think I just got hung up on like, yeah burnt orange and I yeah. made mm-hmm. a surprising number of burnt orange things that I kind of looked back and I was like, oh, I had a little theme going on. And I, I feel like this spring I just I did the same thing and it was more around like blues and navies. And yeah. um so I feel like I feel like it does kind of happen kind of naturally. But I do I I agree that it would be nice to kind of plan it out ahead of time. I mean, it's fun to just sew what you want to sew. <laughs> yeah. And that's, yeah, you know, and I, um, but I, y'all know, I love the planning part. So definitely. Well, and, and I'm sure you all remember that when I was doing my Vienna capsule, it really took up most of my sewing for mm-hmm. 2019. That's almost all that I did in the end. And um, as much as I was really pleased with my capsule at the end when I had it all ready to go, there were still a certain amount of, but I didn't sew that much that was not for this particular purpose. And um, I don't necessarily, I haven't done much rewearing of those particular outfits mm. mostly because mm-hmm. um it, they're they're sort of transitional they're sort of fall and spring and when i would have been wearing them to work this year i was wearing more comfy stuff because i was not going to work i was working from home um and so i i really feel like i kind of in a way i lost um 
a year of impulse sewing, which is how I usually sew. Mm. So, um, and it's not to say I regret doing it, just that it, um, and it was a, it was a big, it was a big capsule. It wasn't six pieces. It was what, five or six shirts and a cardigan and a coat and a couple pairs of pants and a dress. It was, it was an extensive that's a lot. Uh, capsule. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a big capsule. <laughs> yeah. And after explaining it, that's that's a lot. I, I forgot how many. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was, wow, it was a big amazing. capsule. And so in the end, probably you wouldn't have as much of that problem if you were making um, a smaller <laughs> capsule than I undertook. Um, pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> so what is our... Like, let's plan ahead. So what is our dream capsule? Like, what's the theme? What's the color palette? Like, what's the vibe? If you were to design a cap, and let's say you could just, you could get your hands on any fabric in like in the world and you could just, you have all the time and like to sew it. Just like, what's your dream capsule? Mm. Oh man, I would definitely pick something summery. But oh, yeah. I but I'm also I'm having such a problem this year because I just do not need any more summer clothes. So <laughs> um I think it'd be fun to make um I'm like craving the beach right now. So I would love to <gasps> oh. make like a beachy yes. um summer capsule, you know, with lots of linen. Um mm-hmm. and and lots of double gauze. Like I am mm-hmm. just loving that texture right now. And mm-hmm. for summer, there's nothing better. So I really think that that's probably the direction I would go. Maybe a little bit of gingham in the mix. Um, but yeah, that sounds good. Beachy. Yeah, I have to tell you, Amanda, I am currently dreaming about. Some a dress that is basically a potato sack made out of double gauze. It's something that yeah. I just wake up every morning wishing I had to put on. Um, so uh, that has nothing to do with my dream capsule. I think I would also go summary, and um, people are probably going to judge me because of um, the quarantine and the coronavirus and everything. But um, I kind of love cruising, you guys, and I think that I would do a cruising wardrobe. Um, nice. Yep, it would be probably a like a Caribbean cruising wardrobe. So there'd be some bathing suits, there'd be some shorts and some like flowy double gauze pants and some tank tops and maybe some dresses for, you know, formal night. And I don't know, it's already sounding too big. But um, yeah, that's where I would go. I would do a, a warm weather cruise mm. in like... That sounds dreamy. Mm, Not exactly pastels, but sort of um, like pastels with a little extra um, color to them. Like not like super, super pastel-y, but not like jewel tone either. Sort of that Uh mid-range. Nice. If that makes any sense at all to anybody but me. (laughs) (laughs) For me, I would – I feel like I have like pretty much every – like capsule that I would want in terms of like casual, like uh, casual wear to wear out and around town and at home. So I would love to do a like a dream capsule for a trip to Vegas. <laughs> because nice. We were talking on the weekend um, and I've never been to Vegas. Julian's never been to Vegas. My dad has never been. And a couple of, um, of our friends, like we all turned like 30 this year and we were just talking like we should just do once this is all over, we should just all go to Vegas. <laughs> and I just want like, I want to create a capsule of just like, like sequin, like, like sets that I can mix and match and like, um, like a really like cool, like just like really fun pieces, like, like a sheer over jackets the top. and a cork, like, uh, like high waist, yeah, pants with like corsets and just, I don't know. I just am craving that, like, just, I don't know. So that's what would be my dream capsule. And it would be definitely like sequins and lime green and- what? I know. <laughs> maybe gold. Maybe do I want silver or gold sequins? Maybe silver rose gold. Sequins, I, rose gold. Oh, rose gold. Oh, you know what I could do? I could do um, like the color palette. That's like the pink with the the corally, and then the pink, and then the, mm-hmm. the banana leaf. Like that whole vibe. Oh, like that's what I want. Yes. 
okay, so that's what that's what my dream caps would be. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, I want that trip to happen so bad. Oh. Well, fingers crossed for you. Oh, I know. One I day, hope it does. One day I'll get there. Yeah, I think my my mom's just so upset because um, she was gonna maybe come too, and her favorite band is Arrows, but like like it's like her favorite band in the entire world. Like she loves Steven Tyler, and he was doing a residency there, and so and she hates traveling. She. she you can't get her to go anywhere. But as soon as she found out that Steven Tyler was going to be in Vegas, she's like, now that's one place I would actually go. <laughs> <laughs> that is <It's> funny. <laughs> oh, because it was so sad. She had um, in our in London, she actually had like front or second row seats to an Aerosmith concert, but he got bronchitis and it got canceled oh, never no. re- uh, post- and never rescheduled. So she – she deserves to see. St- I don't know how this <laughs> capsule episode turned to me into talking about my mom seeing Steven Tyler. <laughs> I love that. I think because I have the Vegas and like in mind yeah, and all totally. his crazy clothes. Oh, I kind of love his style though. It's it's pretty cool style. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So why don't we take a break and then we'll uh, jump into another little fun Q and A segment after? But yeah, and oh, also I just wanted to, as we were talking about accidental capsules. If any listeners have an accidental capsule, like lay them all out, take a picture and share it with us. Like, I want to see, I want to see if, you know, you guys have accidental capsules too. Would love to see like, you know, if anything just kind of happens with your sewing, you know? Also intentional caps- capsules, but. Also intentional. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll but the we'd accidental like ones are fun. <laughs> Since Amanda couldn't make it to our big host Q&A episode at the beginning of the year, we thought we would ask her the burning questions that you, our listeners, submitted and that Meg and I answered earlier. Meg, feel free to chime in with any new thoughts or changes to former answers, as will I. Amanda, are you ready? I guess so. I'm kind of (laughs) nervous. I know we were kind of nervous, too, but it's fine. So the first question is, is there anything you won't sew? Hmm. You know, for a long time, I didn't, um, I couldn't really see the value in sewing jeans. Mm -hmm. And then I, just because there's so, there's so many steps, they're so basic. Um, I just didn't really get it for a long time. And then obviously I have since changed my tune. Mm. Same with jumpsuits. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think I might have said jumpsuits in our last episode, yeah. and as you can see, that has very recently gotten out the window. It's changing, yeah. I know. I mean, I think um, uncharted territory for me is bras, and I'm still mm, kind of mm-hmm. wondering if it is worth the investment. Um, but also this weekend, I was definitely researching some bra patterns and mm. kits and things like that. So I don't know. I guess probably the thing that I just won't sew right now is kid clothes. <laughs> because <laughs> um, because my kids grow so fast and they're really hard on their clothes. And mm-hmm. we don't really need like heirloom quality, yeah, you know, leggings or anything. So right. I think that's. I feel like every kind of sewing rule I have for myself, like eventually it kind of falls to the wayside because I just get curious. Yeah. I could see that. Meg, what did you say? Do you remember? Oh, I actually totally forget. I think I said a quilt or a bra. Mm. I Yeah. Mm. I think I actually, I think my main one was wedding dresses. I won't sew other people's oh, wedding yeah. dresses. But mm-hmm. Meg will. So that's okay. Well, she'll sew her own anyway. Yeah. Also, my I do not <laughs> ask me to sew. Oh, my gosh. I got asked to make um, a, like a, a upholster like chair. Someone texted me and be like, I spilled coffee on my t- – can you sew like couch like covers? And I was like, no. I, I don't. Nope. I don't know. I, I probably yeah, could, but not I'm not going favorite. to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I probably could. I just – it just doesn't seem very fun. So I no. said – I said no. <laughs> All right. Next question, Amanda. How do you keep sewing fun since it's also your career? Or does sewing feel more like work than play? Huh. You know, I there's a pretty big dividing line between what I'm sewing for fun and what I'm sewing for work. 
And I feel like no matter what I'm sewing, like as I've mentioned before, the more I sew, the more I want to sew. So I feel like they kind of work projects and fun projects kind of cycle together pretty well. Um, I do feel like for work projects, I tend to feel a different level of stress and just, you know, fingers crossed yeah. everything mm-hmm. works out because I don't have time to do this again. Or, you know, I feel like there's a little bit more pressure on myself. So um, the for fun sewing, I think, is a nice counter to that. You know, you mm-hmm. don't, you're not necessarily sewing on a timeline. Um, but yeah, I just I feel like no matter what kind of sewing it is, the more I do it, the more I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. All right. Next question. One thing you wish you knew when you first started sewing. I don't know. I feel like really the biggest regret that I have from my kind of sewing career is that I waited so long to really jump into sewing knits. Mm. Like I really I think that I just really thought that you needed a serger and especially because I feel like Early on, I definitely had some fitting issues. And, you know, Mm -hmm. if I had really jumped into knits, I feel like um, I probably would have sewn more often and had more fun with it earlier on in my sewing career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think I know the answer to this one. What is your favorite fabric to sew with? It's yeah, linen. you know the answer. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely linen. You know, I'll, I'll expand to a linen blend occasionally. No, I'm not. I'm not even a purist, but I do. I love linen. Um, I think it's just about perfect for anything you want to do. And now there's like so many nice um, heavier weight and medium weight linens that I uh-huh. really I feel like you can get. You know, maybe not all the way through the year in linen, but pretty darn close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have really inspired me to sew with li- I like rarely start, rarely sit with linen. And now I just ordered like four yards of lime green linen. And it actually came in yesterday. So I'm super excited. You definitely got me on the linen train. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've got I me just, on the linen I mean, train too. <laughs> I just feel like it's it's lovely to sew with. It'll do whatever you want oh, yeah. it to do. But it's lovely to wear. Um, so nice to wear. You know, the other thing I was thinking about, um, I have a couple, I think I'm going to make some more pants kind of towards the end of summer going into fall. Um, there's just, um, some pants in my wardrobe that I want to replace. And I was also just thinking about how much I love canvas. Um, I don't know if you guys have made much like garment wise with canvas, Mm -mm. but I really love it. It's kind of, you know, it's got a similar weave to linen, I think. And it's just really breathable and comfortable. It Mm -hmm. softens with age, Mm. Um, kind of in the way that denim does. It's got a little, you know, it it relaxes as you wear it. I I really love canvas as well. Plus, it's super easy to sew. Yeah, um, I made a jacket in canvas and a dress, and I it. I really like, really like um. I like the stick. It has a certain. It holds its shape really well. That's what I like. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. I think at this point I tend to like things that are a little bit more structured, like mm-hmm. a little bit more of a structured fabric than things that are just super drapey or super clingy. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, linen for me, linen for you. All right, what would you do if you couldn't sew ever again? Oh my gosh, I would probably go a little crazy and drive my family crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even taking like a couple, just two and a half, three weeks off. um, I, when I came back to it, I was just really aware of what it was like to be sewing again. And I was just like thinking about all these random things while I was sewing. And I was like, why am I even, why did my brain even go there? But it was also kind of lovely because it's just it's just like a little bit of an, an escape for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like let my hands do their thing, let my mind wander, turn on the music, um, have some moments to myself. Um, so right now I feel like it's a really big part of my self-care um, process. And 
I think in this moment, that going away would be, that'd be so sad. <laughs> that would be sad. But I'd also, I'm, you know, I, I've done a lot of different creative things through the, through the years. And I, I just feel like it's kind of a necessity for me to have some kind of creative mm-hmm. outlet. So I'd probably try to find something else. Yeah. You know, it is such a different question today than it was when, you totally. know, Megan and I were asking yeah. each other that in I, January. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah, it's, it's kind of mind blowing how, how different, <laughs> I mean, I think I said, well, I do a whole bunch of other things. I, you know, I cross stitch, which I guess is kind of sewing and I knit and I crochet and, um, you know, I make soap and there's all sorts of stuff that I do that I can use as a creative outlet. But at the same time, like, I, I think I'd be very upset now in a way I wouldn't mm-hmm. have been oh. in January. Um, well, yeah. and it's been a part of my, it's been a big part of my, like, keeping, feeling connected with people mm-hmm. over this, totally. you know, quarantine period. You know, that's, um, that's definitely how I'm, like, interacting with people outside my home, which means, like, other adult humans. So I feel like, yeah, it's become even more important to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. That was kind of a heavy question unexpectedly. Yeah. So we're going to hit a light one. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, definitely mint chocolate chip. <laughs> and that's so funny because we both said that. So we all, yes. three of us all have the same favorite flavor. That Isn't is that funny? so funny. That is yeah. really weird. You know, the really funny thing I was thinking about this earlier today, though, I like never buy mint chocolate chip ice cream like I never have it in my house I only I like I get it when I'm out getting ice cream in my own house I've got like vanilla because I'm like totally basic and um and then like some chocolate gelato with like all of these chunks and it's like for when I need lots of chocolate but like I never have mint chocolate chip in my house it's very strange yeah yeah it's I can't kind of have it in the house because I will. Just, I was just gonna say I, I couldn't have I it. it I couldn't because I would it would be gone in, in a yeah. day <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's not that strange then <laughs> no no but now I want some oh yeah me too I want ice cream right now so bad oh I like I right. want to just walk and get an ice cream cone <laughs> All right. So distracting ourselves. Amanda, how can I, I give honest <laughs> feedback to indie pattern designers without being seen as a hater? This one, I think we left for you because we weren't quite sure how to answer it. Whew, that's a tough one. I mean, I think what it, you know, I think it's important to understand what feedback means here. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like if you're just you know, putting a negative review out into the world for the purposes of putting a negative review out into the world. Um, you know, I feel like I, w- that's not something I would do. I don't think unless, you know, unless I thought that it would help other people. Like if you want to make this pattern, make sure you do a muslin fitting sample first, or, mm-hmm. you know, like kind of more constructive instead of just like, I don't really like this. Um, One thing that I've done in the past, like if you're really passionate about it and you feel like you've got some expertise to lend, um, I would consider um, being a pattern tester, which I have done in the past, which um, was a really good, I mean, that's, that's the right setting for feedback, um, you know, and constructive criticism. Um, and I think that's really, you know, that's when you're going to have the most impact. And um, and I think that people are, independent pattern designers are, you know, regularly pattern test for that very reason. They want to get that feedback. Um, so I think that's probably how I would go about doing it. Um, or, you know, message someone privately and be like, yeah. hey, this In- step... Yeah didn't work out for me. These pieces aren't lining up. Just wanted to let you know. I just, I feel like, um, I wouldn't ever want to just do that publicly for the sake of being like, Mm -hmm. I'm, I have this knowledge and, you know, it's just, I should, I don't think it should be, um, about your ego really. It should be about, um, 
the feedback portion of it. And I'm just, I'm also very, I feel very protective of indie pattern designers because Mm -hmm. I just, I care a lot about that community. I care about, you know, these women who are kind of, um, you know, making art like entrepreneurs and Mm -hmm. I, Mm -hmm. but you know, not everybody's going to succeed. Not everybody is talented in the same exact ways. And, um, so I, I feel like, you know, there are definitely, there are gradients of skill out there, but, um, but I think, I think feedback is, is something that is welcome in the sewing community. Um, you know, negative, um, thoughts about something. Um, I don't know. I think, I think, uh, I, I like the word feedback rather than mm-hmm. criticism. Yeah. And I think, I think that the really important thing to remember is that the person that you're, that you're giving your feedback to the, the person you're communicating with is a, is a human being, they're a person and to be kind mm-hmm. because, um, you know, a, a, a kind, a, a, a a kind and good hearted bit of criticism is a lot easier to take than, you know, snotty complaining. Um, yeah. I, you know, we deal with just enough customer service stuff here that we know that yes. sometimes it's really all in the attitude. Totally. I mean, I think that's, it's like that with anything, but at the same time, I feel like, I feel like there has to be, you know, a space and a willingness to engage with criticism within the sewing community. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't just, all you know be having a popularity contest all the time like oh right you know, no and I, sometimes I'm not things saying, don't work out I'm, I'm not saying that I'm just totally. I'm just saying remember remember that you're talking to a human being and with feelings Absolutely. And, and keep that in yep. mind when you're talking yeah all right and one more question one of the more fun ones for Amanda what is your favorite musical musical artist or band Oh my gosh, this is such a hard question. <laughs> I I hate this question cuz I I mean, I just have I have too many favorites. I have too many favorites. Um I will say that each one of my kids has like a slightly musical inspired name. Um Aww. my daughter's middle name is Simone and she is um named after Nina Simone who is one of my all-time favorites. Probably like lifetime favorite, definitely Nina Simone is up there. Um, so I guess I guess I would have to go with her just in terms of like longevity. But I I love music. I mean, we that's one of the things that's actually been hardest about quarantine. Like when I think about the things that I miss the most, like going to see live music is mm. <gasps> yeah. at the top. Cause we, yeah. we live about 10 minutes away from Red Rocks here. And so, I mean, that is just an epic music venue. Um, and I am missing it so much right now, but I definitely, I tend towards the like slightly crunchy, um, <laughs> a little bit of folk influence, but also like a pretty heavy dose of like soul and yeah, th- those are those are kind of my favorites. Nice. See, nice. hard question. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's it's a sufficient answer. Okay, <laughs> we we got the general feel. Got oh it. yeah. All right. Thank you, Amanda, for taking the time to answer these questions. We had been meaning to do this for a while, and and uh, yeah. life and quarantine got in the way. But I think this is a really fun thing to do, and we appreciate you doing that for us. I know we really yeah, put you he- on the spot. <laughs> No, you're good. You know, and I think I, I think it is just so interesting, as you pointed out, like so much has changed. And yeah. yeah. Um, between when you guys answered these questions and now. It's just it's I think, yeah, just a whole lot of perspective in the last couple of mm-hmm. months. Oh, for yeah. sure. But should we jump into Sojo, you guys? Let's do it. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite part of the show when we talk about your sewing mojo, what is giving you inspiration at the moment? How about you, Kate? 
Oh, um, well, I have now finished my very first jumpsuit-ish thing, and I kind of stopped and I thought, okay, what do I do now? And then I remembered I have my Delphi dress that I've been meaning to make for like a year that's actually cut out. Um, So all I have to do is remind myself what the sewing instructions are and find the um, bias tape that I know I made for it, and then I can actually just go ahead and start making it. So that's the next thing on my list. and. Um, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I was really inspired to do this. And then I just kind of ran out of time and then I kind of lost the momentum on it. But I'm hoping once I pick it up and really start stitching it, I'm going to be like super excited about it again. So Delphi dress. Love it. How about you, Meg? Well, I've actually been on a shapewear making journey. (laughs) That's awesome. uh, Underwear. I've made... I think the weekend before, like not last weekend, but the weekend before, um, I made four pairs of like control top, like a uh, biker kind of shorts to wear under skirts and dresses. And mm-hmm. then I made 12 thongs <laughs> as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I made like the seamless ones, like they're not even finished on the edges because those are my favorite ones to wear because you can't um, see any lines through. And I had my favorite pair that I bought at the store and they had like a rip in them. And I ended up taking them apart. And then I got the pat, I laid out, it's just one piece. And then I trans, I got the pattern from it and then I just cut a bunch. And now it's like total game changer. Uh, so I'm still on that train. I'm, I'm making some, um, some more like control chop pieces and and stuff. So that's been really fun and a money saver. Oh my, mm-hmm. like the ones mm-hmm. that I would buy, they would be like $14.99 for one pair. And I just, I made 12 in like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> and but little spandex. Fa- yeah. I just use white spandex fabric and I just left the edges raw. Like, and so, the, and they fit like beautifully. And so, yeah. That's awesome. I love it. So. I'm, I've seen so many people making undies right now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe we're just all sick of doing laundry. And and, uh, <laughs> and of course we're down to, we're down to that size scraps. Yeah. I know. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> or we're not like maybe we're not you know, you can't throw on your latest make and like Ex- go parade yeah. it around. So now's a good time to be working on the the other stuff. I don't mm-hmm. know. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um how about you, Amanda? I, yeah. You know, I was, it's so funny. I I finally got back into the sewing room this weekend. And I think because I'm often sewing when my kids are taking a nap, I just am like, okay, I mean, what if they wake up? Like I'm, there's a little bit of stress. Like I'm going to try to get as much done as I can during this time when they're asleep. And, and I think that's honestly why I sew so fast. Is because I, <laughs> you know, because I'm doing it in small chunks and I know small like chunk. I've only got, you know, an hour and a half before I need to go to bed or before these kids are going to wake up. And so I'm trying to like pack it in. So um, over the weekend, I tried to slow down a little bit and that was really good. Um, I'm working on another hack of the Roscoe blouse. Nice. If you can even believe it. This is like hack 82. Um, but it's making it a dress version finally. And, um, it involves a lot of ruffles. So I am definitely trying to take my time, which I just hate making (laughs) gathers and ruffles and like trying to get them perfectly, you know, proportioned Mm -hmm. and evenly spread out. So, but I'm trying to take my time a little bit with that. Um, cause this is going to be my, my birthday dress coming up next month. And, um, so I'm going to try to, to make it last and kind of just spend a little bit more time on the finishes and making everything just how I would like to make it for my birthday. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it is funny. I feel like taking a break from sewing and coming back really was kind of enlightening just Mm -hmm. to like, remember why it was so important to me. Like, be really conscious of how I feel when I'm in my sewing space and I'm mm-hmm. hoping the kids don't wake up from their nap. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, funny, funny stuff. I feel like I'm the same way when Julian's, oh, he, he's a late sleeper. Right? And so, and, but he like, um, he's always wondering what I'm doing because he's at home most of the time. Uh, so it's like 
getting as much done while he's sleeping is good because then he's like, what are you doing? What's that? What's that? What, can I have? Because I've taught him how to use a surger now. So if he goes, is there anything you can surge? I can do it. I can do it. I'm like, don't <laughs> trust you oh quite yet. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know. My kids will come in and like, they want to sit on the back of my chair while I'm working and they want to, you know, they just yeah. have a lot of questions. So I'm mm-hmm. either like, sewing while they're napping or they're in the other room and I'm just mm-hmm. sewing as much as I can until mm-hmm. there's yelling because there's always, yep. you know, going to be yelling and I have to get up. But yeah. I, I don't know. Did we record since I, since Julian actually made his onesie? Remember that onesie we were talking about for like just so long? He finally made it. And so I don't think, yeah. No, so we have I'll not have to, recorded since that happened. Picture, but, yes, please. But, I have have to see that. Oh my gosh, he loves it. He was wearing it all weekend. I just he's seeing him lounging on the couch in this like huge onesie. It's so funny. He was he super it. proud of himself. He was. He actually yeah. That's he did awesome. all the surging for it, and I sewed the zipper in. Uh, but yeah, it was so funny. We literally laid the fabric on the ground, and he laid like he laid on it, and I just traced around his body. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked, honestly. It totally worked. It was just like this big, like, <laughs> it was so funny. That Anyways, is awesome. I'll, I'll share all the pictures super awesome. of that process. <laughs> I cannot wait to see photos. Oh. Nor can I. All right, let's hop into So and Tell, you guys. Last episode, we asked, what's your best online sewing fabric shopping tip? Um. And we got some good responses. Meg, you want to start us off? Yeah, so many good tips. Um, and our first one is from Look at Her So, and they said shops are often very happy to give advice and answer questions. I would recommend reaching out to the staff to see if they think a fabric would be suitable for a certain garment or to see if they have a recommendation. That's a great tip. So great. Yeah, it is. Even I though love that. I'm, yeah. Go ahead. You can go. I was just going to say, like, I think some of the, you know, smaller fabric stores, you know, that's, you know, if they can respond and give you that, I mean, that, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because even Amanda and I were working with um, a fabric company to get some fabric for something that we're sewing. And we said, we'll take this fabric for a pants. And they they called me and they're like, this actually won't work for pa-. and I was like, thank you. Like it's it yeah. is sometimes hard to know. So ask them, like, will this work for this garment? And I'm sure they'll be happy, happy to tell you before you, you know, they send it to you and everything. Yeah. So definitely that's a great tip. So great. Um, we also heard from MB So Bobby on Instagram who said, spend a little time researching the type of fabrics you want. Mood Fabric has great online resources mm. available and good blog posts. Even when you do good research, a fabric you buy will surprise you and not be appropriate right. for what you thought. There will always be a good project for it if you That's- are flexible. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's definitely my take on the whole online shopping thing. Like, do your research. Make your best educated guess and be prepared to change your plan completely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. We also heard from the sewing bins who said, take advantage of swatch services when it's an important project to you. Otherwise, don't shy away from anything. It only increases your fabric experiences. And I love that. It's very like, you know, if it's really important, do the swatch. If you're willing yeah. to just run with it, just run with it. I like it. You know, I saw a tip about this actually over the weekend. Um, someone was saying that they would try to buy like a quarter of a yard. Like if you're shopping somewhere and they can um, they can send you that because that will give you a little bit of a better idea of how something's actually going to drape mm-hmm. than yeah, a swatch. Than a you know, because square, yeah. some, you can't tell too much. I mean, you can tell a lot of things from a swatch, but if it's a really important piece the drape is key, you know, think about ordering a little bit larger. Of a section. Mm-hmm. I liked that idea. Then you could use all those pieces to like make something like a cool, like you could sew them all together, make a, you know, so many things you could do with like lots of little quarter yards. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. But, and I do like this though. I like that it's, it, you have to think about it in terms of your learning oh, yeah. experience, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, okay. I don't really like any kind of polyester blends in my fabrics yeah. or, you know, you, you, you kind of build up your own knowledge, um, as you go. So this week we are curious to know what your dream capsule theme would be. 
Mm, I feel like there's going to be a lot of travel related things. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Bring it. I need all that, all that inspiration. For sure. All right. And um, you can let us know on, you can let us know via email or on our Instagram feed at so and tell pod. Let us know. Um, Let us know what you're working on. Let us know um, what you think about capsules in general. And um, yeah. What, what you're up to. Accidental capsules. Accidental capsules. <laughs> Purposeful I capsules. That. I know, I do too. Trending hashtag. Strive. Yeah. <laughs> Ex- Ooh, that would be cool. All right. Well, thank you for chatting <laughs> yeah, with fun. us today. That was a good episode. Um, I hope everybody is uh, doing well and staying healthy. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. Until next time. Yeah, until next time. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the sewandtell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. I can't remember where I was, but they really needed to let me know that they caught a moth. It was really urgent. So, oh my gosh. They were like, here it is. Because we've, Colorado has like a bunch of Miller's moths this season for some reason. They were very proud of themselves. I was like, I'm not impressed. Go away. All right. Poor, they'll be scarred for life.